Last year, my favourite gaming experience was the Talos Principle, and I like Subnautica for similar reasons. I'm not going to pussyfoot about in this video. After this opening section, I will be openly talking about this game's mechanics, world and story, because this game left a great impression on me and I'd like to talk about it. A friend of mine recommended it to me and told me to go in blind. I did, and I enjoyed it. Even the stuff about it that I don't normally find appealing in other games. So if you trust my opinion about other games that I've talked about, I advise that you play this one before watching this video. It's a fun game that delivers a lot of enjoyment per hour of gameplay. Although I'd say I've finished it, there's still something special and rather mysterious about it that I feel would be ruined upon repeat playthroughs. So I'm going to move on from it with a bunch of fond memories, but there's definitely a lot of replayability here if you're that kind of person. Let's begin. To keep you alive on an alien world. Please refer to the databank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. Subnautica is a nice game, made by nice people. For a game about survival, and so full of creatures that want to eat you, it would have been easy to make it a ruthless and harrowing experience. And yet it remains a game primarily about adventure and exploration, and while the threat of death is never far away, it's forgiving enough not to detract from whatever gameplay element you find yourself pursuing at the time. When my ship crash landed and I stepped out of my survival pod, I totally misread what kind of game it was. It is not an infinite, procedurally generated world about collecting lots of things. It is instead a compact, handcrafted and very well thought out experience. And it's all the better for it. It relies on human curiosity to tell its story. About wanting to know about what's around the next corner, and about pushing a little further with each expedition that you make. It never specifically tells you what to do or where to go, and yet I seldom found myself lost, or without something to do and with very little guidance I made my way through to the end of the game. That's this game's strength. Its world is worth exploring, and there's little wasted space other than what's needed to give a sense of grandeur and mystery to its biomes. And what an adventure it is. Simply being set below the water level is a novelty unto itself. Off the top of my head, I can't think of another game where I prefer the underwater gameplay, but it's just as well Subnautica takes to the sea like a fish to water, since everything about being stood on dry land in this game feels subpar. It looks rough, your movement is floaty, and its overall quality slips into the same category as every other survival-based game on Steam. Subnautica takes the idea of fully underwater levels and swims with it, resulting in some of the freshest, most unique, and most exciting video game environments that I've ever set Flipper in. Being the seasoned gamer that I am, my first instinct was to collect everything in sight. Bad idea. Storage space is limited, and a lot of what you pick up goes out of date. It's a jarring realisation, and a difficult habit to break. You begin by crafting lots of extra storage containers, but it's a losing battle. At some point you just have to stop picking up stuff that you don't need to make space for the stuff that you do. There are four things that you need to survive. Health, food, water and oxygen and it's this stuff you really get to grips with in the early stages of the game. Oxygen. Your playthrough will be filled with tense moments as you run out of oxygen 30 metres before reaching the surface, or when you find yourself low on supplies and questioning if you should cut an expedition short or if you should push on, and with it risk running out of food or water instead. It's honestly this stuff that makes this game's exploration so memorable and meaningful, though I'd have liked ways of becoming less reliant on water in the later stages of the game rather than to clog my storage space up with bottles, but for the most part the game works excellently. Your exploration is rewarded with new equipment to craft that suddenly makes your current limitations and troubles disappear, allowing for you to focus on whatever the next constraint might be. All the while you're pushing further from home and deeper into the ocean's depths for supplies and answers. And it's well worth the asking price. No Man's Sky may feature a trillion planets, but Subnautica's one underwater volcano is the one I'd rather explore. It's a place filled with weird and wonderful things to discover. A lot of the creatures come with unique gameplay quirks. I won't give any of this away, the beauty of it is in discovering this kind of stuff for yourself, in overcoming the obstacles and in bending the environment to your will. It's one that's densely packed with fauna and flora to be harvested. If I needed something, more often than not, it would be right there in front of me. It's testament to the game's design that everything sat right there, yet isn't a distraction when it isn't needed. Yet I couldn't shake the feeling that resources are finite. Stuff I harvested seemed to remain harvested. I began wondering what would happen if I used up all of a required resource. Would it have made the game impossible? Are there measures in place to prevent that from happening? And upon revisiting regions, I'd find stuff I had dropped hours before. 
This made me deliberately hoard stuff away rather than to clutter up the ocean. But it's just as well I ended the game when I did, or I swear Subnautica would have been filled with rotten peepers. There's vast depth to this alien world, yet the enemy creatures were disappointingly shallow. Let me be clear, this is not a game about fighting creatures. You are low down the food chain, and your best chance against most enemies is to swim away as quickly as you can. It's just that doing this proves to be a rather overpowered strategy, because no matter how big or mean the fishies looked, the same strategy of ignoring them and swimming straight to my destination worked 100% of the time. They just couldn't seem to catch up with me. Don't get me wrong, I'm pleased the game isn't a harrowing and ruthless combat experience, but it was disappointing to discover that each new enemy type behaved exactly like the last. It meant that the terror of encountering a new monster in a dark cave immediately wore off once I discovered it behaved exactly like the others I had already encountered. I'd have liked for different enemies to have different solutions, maybe ones that look menacing but which swim off if you stand your ground, or ones that are genuinely dangerous but have extremely poor eyesight or whatever. The toughest enemy I faced was the one you'll encounter about two minutes into your playthrough. At this point of the game, the suicidal red fish swim faster than you do and you'll quickly die from their explosions if you haven't figured out how to craft a health kit. Also, there are these huge creatures lurking in deep waters to stop you from escaping the playable area, but one of these somehow snuck into a safe starter zone and killed me about five minutes into my first playthrough. It messed me up because afterwards I purposefully avoided that place for hours, even though I've never had a problem with them in that region ever since. After that freak encounter, no monster proved to be a problem for me ever again. I started with good intentions, but it had become a quick save addict by the end. The idea of losing my progress or equipment was too much to bear and I found myself saving before every dive, careful not to do it moments before being eaten by a shark since you only have one save file per playthrough to fall back on. You have been warned. Subnautica's campaign is tidily split up into stages, each with different gameplay cycles, strengths and weaknesses. The first is about trying to stay alive until you discover the scanner, at which point you quickly learn to scan everything you can to learn more about the world and to research new items to craft. Your survival pod's radio is an excellent idea. From time to time it will ping messages from other survival pods, detailing their whereabouts and how deep they are. This is an organic way of giving you points of interest to discover whilst gradually upping the difficulty level, though how you approach such tasks, or indeed if you bother at all, are up to you. This game has no map. This is both frustrating and brilliant since it encourages you to learn your surroundings, as well as to use the main crashed ship to get your bearings. It also encourages the use of beacons, which can help highlight places you think may be of value to you at a later date. I've said it already, but this all works so organically that I'm in awe at this game's design. It's about adventure and it gets it so right. You get fully invested in what you're currently doing and surviving a productive expedition is so, so rewarding. I won't spoil things for the sake of it, but there's a lot to do and to explore in the first part of this game. I don't care much for stories, but I enjoyed trying to piece together what happened to other survivors of the crash, and the game drops just the right amount of hints and clues about what else might be lurking on the planet for you to discover. Vehicles are something of a turning point. Their infinite supply of oxygen suddenly removes the biggest barrier to your exploration, though they do come with their own limitations. But they pave the way to the next bit of the game, and the real highlight for me, and that's when you begin discovering the deep caves. Beneath the map, spoiler alert, is a vast labyrinth of caves and tunnels, leading deeper and deeper. My goodness, it's been some time since I last played a game that had this much atmosphere. If you've ever looked into the night sky and wondered what it would be like to explore an alien world, or if you've ever peered into a cave in real life and felt that sense of wonder and terror at how small it makes you feel, please play this game. While you're down there, it's terrifying, and when you're up at the surface between expeditions, your mind is fixated on those caves, about what could be lurking around the next corner, and about what you'll need to bring on your next outing. Subnautica's cave system is a thing of wonder, a high point in gaming, and it's simple enough to remember the way, but complex enough that you never feel quite comfortable with it. This is one of the reasons I'm afraid to replay this game, for if I get too comfortable with that network, if I map out every nook and cranny, I fear the game could lose the very magic that makes it so special to me right now. I try to be objective in these videos, but the feeling of exploring those caves taps into some of my fondest childhood memories, and you can't put a price on making new memories like those. As for the storylines, 
I feel it does a good job of covering everything you'd want from an alien world, and you're free to invest as much or as little time learning about them as you like, so that's all cool. It's only at the end that it falls a little short, when the mystery about the story and the world subsides and it becomes more about gathering resources. And while it would take no more than 5 minutes to get to anywhere I needed to go, that could be a long and frustrating 5 minutes, especially if it meant backtracking to places I had been just 10 minutes prior. The game's got its own menu system but I found myself increasingly reliant on the game's online wiki to know which resources were needed and where they could be found, because otherwise I'd have been punished for not paying attention to where the stuff in my inventory had been gathered from in the first place. So the game's about discovery, adventure and about evading scary looking monsters. But if you really want to fight creatures, you can do that too. It was a portion of the game I barely touched, but you can build vehicles, upgrade them and kit them out with defensive and offensive measures. I just didn't see the point in doing this for combat reasons, what with my next gen swim past them strat rendering all that redundant. I used vehicles as a way of travelling from A to B, and to mine rare materials, and that was about it. That being said, I've read thrilling accounts of players facing up against the game's toughest enemies in a giant submarine, detailing the encounter and all the cool stuff that happened as it tore chunks out of their hull and as they battled with the alarms and fires breaking out around their ship. They made it sound awesome but I don't think the experience was compatible with my style of playthrough. Because of my focus on the main campaign, the gigantic Cyclops submarine proved to be a colossal waste of time. It's effectively a travelling base that's so big it gets caught on every corner of every cave. It's got lots of cool features and upgrades, which again I'm sure will appeal to a particular type of gamer, but not to me. I just overclocked the engine, set fire to it, put it out again, and then got it stuck in a cave entrance. I guess I was expecting it to be like a bigger, deeper version of the Seamoth. I just wish I had known how irrelevant to my playstyle it would have been before I spent several hours constructing it. You can also build bases wherever you please. I made one as a means to an end, being little more than a refilling station. But again, that's on me, and if you like the idea of constructing a safe place amidst the acid caves or whatever, then you'll probably get a lot of fun from this feature. Special mention to the game's music. You begin to associate certain tracks with certain actions and after enough repetition I grew increasingly fond of the dramatic low beat as I descended into the depths, or that bell tune in the shallows as I knew already that I was creating memories that I'd look back at fondly at some unknown point in the future. Subnautica has soul. These days, in an ever more crowded games market, it's refreshing to find one that attempts something new, and to be able to dive into Subnautica's underwater world, and to discover so much worth exploring down there, is a refreshing change. There are a few games to compare it to, so there's less to criticise, and all this lets me appreciate the journey all the more. Captain, all systems online. 